hey there, take a look at this. This is a miter ruler for unequal intersecting pitch root of a 9 to a 512. And the way you obtain it is you simply measure over 9 inches, square over 5 inches, connect the dots, assuming this is a square corner, and run it wild. And then slide your framing square over to 12 inches and head it off. That'll give you a 12 inch run for the common rafter. So the long run will be the low pitch, will be the 512 pitch. Remember a run is an emanation of the common rafter in plan view at 90 degrees. And the short run will be the 912. And since that's the case, then you could also just use math and say 9 divided by 5, or 5 divided by 9 times 12 would give you this length, 6.66 over 12, 6.66, connect the dots, and you'll have your triangle here. This is the hip or valley rafter running in plan view, and you can see it's a thin line, so in my case, I have a 3 by valley raptor or hip raptor whichever you prefer running along here so i mentioned measure over an inch and a quarter either direction and run it on through and then here's the deduction this would be right here the irregular double cheek cut and i say irregular because the framing member is irregular in that it doesn't bisect the 90 degree corner cheek cuts right one is a steep cheek cut and one's a shallow steep cut a 29 degree and a 61 degree, both of which equal 90 degrees in plan view, because all cheek cuts are calculated in plan view, you see? And then this will also give you, if you look down at it, the side cuts or cheek cuts of the jack rafters, the steep and the shallow jack rafter, as well as the ratio of the on-center spacings to each other. Remember, nine divided by five and five divided by nine are the key uh, to finding the on-center spacing as well as the cheek cut setbacks. And the setback is how much you measure back before you, before you square over so that you can connect dots with your saw. So you don't know where to start your steel saw if it was set at the right or circular saw if it was set at the correct angle. So you'll need to draw a line back far enough and that's, you can calculate in this case uh, would be five, uh, nine divided by five times inch and a quarter would give you the two and a quarter setback to draw a plumb line to set the saw, in this case a 20 degree angle, to give you the long, you know, the, the point. And the other one is a five eighths of an inch setback to run your saw at a 29 degree angle to give you the other side of the point. And I've done that right here. As you can see, I'm bring this up near you, right? Here it is, center lines drawn out here, right? There's the 29 in plan view and the 61 in plan view, right? So now the next question is backing angles, right? Everyone wants to back. Nobody wants to bring, they, they've done all this hard work. <laughs> they want to put a bevel on it, especially if you have a, fatter framing members. Some people back narrow framing members, but everyone pretty much with a bastard, excluding me, <laughs> um, because I want to run up and down it, we'll back them. And I don't want there to be a point, right? So how do you do it? And the answer is, well, let's take a look. I'm going to reset this angle here so you can see this here. And I'm just going to grab a pencil over here. And I'm going to, this is a plumb, right? So your rafter, say it's a hip rafter, is going to stack like that up against the ridge if you don't back it, right? So you see it's plumb here. You line it up to center line. You just draw a line there. And that would be the backing angle, right? You bring that line along the side and you draw it out on a piece of wood, inch and a quarter and whatever that distance is, and you could either use 
your square to calculate, you know, to swing it to that angle that you've achieved and figure out what the bevel is. Or you can just, or you can use a T-bevel. But is that the only way to get it? And the answer is, look, it's, you just square over from center line. It's the same as squaring over from center line. And that's because when it, when it's framed, when it runs up against the ridge, assuming it's not a double cheek cut, it's just level, right? And it's framed correctly when it's backed. So take a look at this. I don't have a backing angle on this one. And I don't know what it is, right? Well, there it is for the valley. And there it is, right, for the hip. So now in this case, the hip is the this dimension. I have to be transferred up to this side, up to the top. The other side is the same. Look. Set it right there so you can see it. Draw it here, transfer it along the side. Draw it out on a piece of plywood or use your math if you want to calculate the angle. Right? 